Brooks, who has been appointed by the county executive to the required position of elected fire protection district director for a term of three years, and the Honorable Laura Arnold to the required vacant position of elected municipal official for a term of three years. And then to the St. Louis County Civil Service Commission um, to consider the appointment of Ms. Raven Akram to fill a vacant position for a term of four years. The committee takes official notice of and admits into evidence all St. Louis County ordinances and resolutions. So with that, I will um, go in the order of our agenda. I will turn it over to our appointees to introduce themselves, um, share a little bit about yourself and why you're interested in serving on this board or commission. Um, and then we will turn it over to the council members for any questions they may have. So um, first up is Mr. Rooks. You guys can see me okay. We cannot see you, Mr. Rooks. I think you need to turn your camera on if you are able uh, to. Uh, that, that will be fun. I have no idea what to do. Normally I'm on Zoom and everything happens just right. Um, I can at least uh, let you know something about me. Um, uh, 70 years old, or no, 70 years young. Uh, <laughs> I know Mr. Fitch. What's up, Tim? And um, I, I've I worked as a firefighter for a community fire protection district. Um, I tell folks my claim to fame is this. I was the first African-American that uh, community hired some years ago. I gave them 34 years of service. My last 10 was as a captain. I couldn't get one of the battalion chiefs to retire. So my body said I had to do something a little bit different. So I had to retire in 2012. Um, I, I'm currently um, not employed, but I'm, I currently serve the Mid-County Fire Protection District as a, a board of director. Um, I was appointed uh, a couple of years ago to fill out a term for another gentleman. Um, after which I had to run um, this past April, but fortunately I ran unopposed. So I'm in for another six years. Um, I mainly wouldn't mind being on this uh, particular board because I'm, I'm interested in um, having a minority participation um, and, and some of the offices that are held around the county. Um, also, um, I'd like to be able to make uh, make a contribution and, and to give back uh, to the fire service something that it, it has afforded me a great livelihood in life for the last few years. And that's about it. I, I can also add, I'm, I'm licensed and ordained as a minister. I, um, I served a, as a chaplain with the Community Fire Protection District for a number of years, and um, I did I did a few, did a term with uh, Vanita Terrace when it was Vanita Terrace, but it switched over to Vanita Park, which I was offered a position, but I I said, well, I'm done. I, I would rather do the uh, be on a fire board, so. That's what basically um, all I can tell you about myself. I'm married uh, well, 48 years. Um, I have an older daughter. Hi, Miss Days. Um, also, uh, that's that's about it. Well, thank you, Mr. Rooks. At this point, I will turn it over to um, other members of the council if they have any questions for you. All right. Madam Chair. Yes, Councilman Fitch. Uh, thank you, Reverend, uh, for agreeing to serve in this capacity. We look forward to working with you. Um, we do look forward to, we've heard uh, some comments about some things at the Fire Academy about lack of diversity. Uh, so we look forward to any suggestions you can bring to the table to uh, improve on those situations. Do you have anything in mind uh, that you would like to do if, if approved uh, to make that happen? Basically, I could. Uh, I, I know that we have a, a uh, one person that's there at the academy uh, that serves, and he has some good ideas. Um, I would get with him and and uh, and and see what uh, see exactly what 
program is already set up and I would try to work work with that. All right, thank you. That's all I have, Madam Chair. Mm -hmm. Madam Chair. Yes, Councilman Harder. Yes, Mr. Rooks, uh, thank you again for serving on this board. Uh, we've had, as uh, Councilman Fish said, that uh, we've had issues with uh, accusations that uh, we have not been able to recruit uh, minorities and African Americans into the fire service. Uh, you served a long time in the fire service. What can be done to bring in more uh, minorities into all levels of the fire service uh, that we're not currently doing right now? Um, just to have somebody that's, that's going to implement the program that you already have set up um, and, and specifically deal with, um, well, since COVID is taking the, uh, a, a lot of situations out of the way, um, it makes it a little more difficult, but um, I think there, there's a program that you that that is with the uh, that is already in place. All that's necessary is, is to to me is to have somebody that will be a face for it or go out and and um, talk to maybe some uh, schools. And then there there are quite a few. Uh, young men and women uh, who would be interested in, in the fire service. And it's just making it, getting more information out to bring more people in. Is, is there any barriers that you perceive uh, in the fire service that is not uh, making it a lot easier for uh, minorities to walk in and say, hey, raise your hand, I wanna be a fireman? Uh, I, I think that for me, one problem would, would be um, getting uh, blame, which is another, uh, another, uh, another union and at, at least trying to see what, uh, meet them at a, at a happy medium or talk to them because they have, to me, they had had uh, legitimate concerns, but it makes a different uh, difference when you have somebody that can sit down and talk and, and smooth some things out. Um, I give you an example. I, I, um, when Flame first started, I did attend quite a few of their meetings. I chose to stick with 2665 mainly because I said in order to have changes made, you still have to have somebody sitting at the table. So I, I, I went ahead and stayed with 2665, which has always been a, a benefit to me. Um, just getting uh, getting together and, and finding out what are some of the things that that keep minorities from uh, really making advancements or getting at least uh, getting a, a having a chance to be looked at and uh, making it possible for them to uh, get into the fire service. Okay, thank you. That might have been a long, long answer, but uh, I'm a preacher. We talk a lot. <laughs> Madam Chair? Amen. Yes, Amen. Councilwoman Days. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Rooks. How are you today? I am great, and you, ma'am? I'm doing fantastic. I apologize for getting on late. I've been having computer issues, and it wanted to restart, and so I had to allow it to do that. But I, I, I really want to delve a little deeper into, you know, your comments there uh, regarding the diversity. And I, I, I'm not sure if there will there be any other African Americans on this board. I, I have no idea about that, but I know that being in a minority is going to be a challenge. Uh, because uh, in many instances, you'll probably be outvoted depending on what the issue is. 
And so I'm I'm looking I'm looking for someone to do business a little differently, if you will, uh, and and someone that is willing to push the envelope in terms of the diversity that is not there with the fire board and with the um um, um with this uh, particular uh, entity. And so I, I need to know I need to know how how to address that because this is this is critical. It is becoming very evident that that St. Louis County is not as open to diversity as it should be. And so I'm looking for something a little differently and I need to know what what are you, what are your plans in terms of that? Uh, my plan is to as I'm looking at, at the screen now, I, I see diversity. The only only thing that I don't see is a, a, a black male that's uh, that I can look at and, and say, OK, he's working. Uh, as, as I said before, the the there's all already systems set up. They just things just need to be implemented or to be made known. Um, and and I'm, I'm sure that, that we have a couple of uh, young guys that are that are part of the, the uh, training that uh that will that will be beneficial and and getting out and getting to schools or, or just getting a message out i also work with a group um uh, of of ministers um and uh dealing with them and, and talking with them i i'm sure that there are things that can be added um <laughs> that would be a good addition to the organization that that you already have set up. Well, clearly, the the, the organization that's set up is not bringing in the diversity that I think is um, uh, is needed as we move forward with that. Um, we know the culture there; the culture is not very good there for minorities, or we wouldn't have people leaving uh, as as they have been and moving on to other lucrative positions. So uh, this is going to be uh, very important to me as I as I look at this. I know you remember 2665 and 2665, we know runs the fire in, in St. Louis County and, and many other counties. And so it would be yeah. incumbent upon it would be incumbent incumbent upon 2665 to make efforts to do that. Uh, I've had conversations with them uh, on a number of occasions. You know, this is not my first first rodeo. And I've yes, been in this business for a little while, and the and 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 even at that, this this culture has not changed at all. So I'm 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 really going to be looking to see what you can put forward there if if your uh, nomination goes through. So I appreciate the time. Thank you so much. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Any other questions from the council for Mr. Rooks? All Let right. Let me just add this. Oh, yes, um, go ahead. Since I've, um, I chose to stay with uh, 2665 at, at, the, at that time because I knew that somebody still needed to be at the table. So I, myself personally, I think I have a, a good working relationship uh, with 2665. So I'm, I'm sure that there are some things that I might bring up that people might, might have a problem with or might not be happy about, but um, I am a person that's going to uh, more or less push an envelope to try to get some changes made. Um, as, as an ex example is, uh, I do come, I do have somewhat of a political background. It's not that great, but I, I do know uh, how to do and how to travel and and do things with politically. Um, I, I can mention this fact: I haven't had an uncle uh, that was politically motivated, uh, and and it was Solomon Rooks. Uh, he was uh, head of the core Congress of Racial Equality for a number of years, but he has since passed. Um, I I believe I just get some of my. The desires to make changes uh, just through my knowledge of knowing how he had gotten out and tried to do things and make changes. Um, believe me, I'm not a rebel, but I can be.
Well, thank you, Mr. Brooks. Thank you for your willingness to serve in this important role. Um, with that, we will move on to our next appointee, um, the Honorable Laura Arnold. Um, Ms. Arnold, if you would like to introduce yourself to us. Thank you. I know you all have had a long day already and more to come, so I'll be brief and then look forward to your questions. Um, as, as the chairwoman said, I'm a city council member in Webster Groves. I'm also an adjunct uh, professor of political science, both at Webster University in the past and at UMSL, uh, although currently I don't have classes, unfortunately, because of the pandemic. Um, I am the mother of college age triplets. I am a community uh, volunteer and actually serve right now as chair of the steering committee for Arts and Faith St. Louis, as well as on the board of Webster Rock Hill Ministries, which is a neighborhood help center and food pantry in my neighborhood. We in Webster Groves absolutely love our fire department. We are very supportive of our firefighters. I think that is uh, most evident in the overwhelming majority that passed the latest bond issue to build a fire, to not build, but rehab our second firehouse in Webster. Um, and we are supportive of those firefighters because of the great job they do and how much they're involved in our community. Um, serving on the fire service, fire standards commission would be a way for me to help serve the department as well as the county more generally. I um, really am looking forward to the opportunity to learn more about the job and the standards and the role of the commission if I am nominated. All right, sorry if I'm confirmed. And I'm also looking to my best to advance some of the things that we've already talked about here in reading the minutes and studying a little bit about the commission there has been discussion of increased diversity and i'd like to see if i could serve as maybe wing woman to reverend rooks and moving that further down the line very substantially um, as well as making sure that uh, our departments are in the position to work together this is a really good example of how coordination among so many different entities of government in the county can work so I'm happy to take your questions. Thank you, Ms. Arnold. Any questions from the council? Yes, Madam Chief. Councilwoman Days, yes. Yes, thank you. So, um, um, Honorable Arnold, so what do you what do you currently know about the makeup of the of the uh, of the board that you're about to serve? Uh, I believe it is overwhelmingly populated by white men. Uh, I would be the only woman is my understanding. Um, and I, I do not know the racial composition of the board itself. Um, that, was, that information was not available to me. Well, we recently had a woman who resigned from yes. that um, and and um, and she was very discouraged at the at the uh, lack of ability in her making strides in looking at the diversity issues that plague absolutely plague this particular um, this board. And so I need to know what what is it that you can do that, that would be different? And I, I'm not sure how long she served, but she worked very hard at trying to do that. So what can you bring differently than she did? Perhaps well, let me let me mention that I've spoken to both the women who who would precede me if I'm selected. So I think the first thing is I do understand, I think a little bit more about maybe what I'm getting into here and the, the difficulties in pushing this agenda forward. What would I do differently? I, you know, I don't know what I do differently yet because I'd like to spend a little bit of time with the members of the board to figure out who they are and what has stood in the way of advancing this agenda. Uh, and without understanding that, it's a little hard for me to say, I'm gonna do X, Y, or Z. However, I will tell you that one of the things that people who work with me know is I'm persistent. I'm not gonna just take no for an answer. And so I will keep doing the work as long as I possibly can. Um, and I hope that given where we are right now in the world, that this commission recognizes that there is a demand for them, and if I join them, us to act. We don't operate, we're operating in a position right now where racial equity has to be part of what we do. Um, but I can't tell you how until I get a little better sense of, of what that commission's hurdles have been to this point. 
Well, how, how diverse is your board? You're on the Webster Groves board right yeah. now. How diverse have, is your board? We have seven, we have six council members plus a mayor. Um, two of the members of our council are uh, black. Uh, we have, uh, I got a count in my head, four of the seven, five of the seven are women on our, on our board. So we have, and, and considering that the black population of Worcester Groves is less than 10%, having two council members, I think for us, and, and I will be honest, this is the first time in a while that we've had um, two members of the council who are black members of our community. Okay, well, understand what you're going into. Um, that this is very critical. And although that a lot of people uh, around the country have expressed unrest, we're still in St. Louis. And yes. St. Louis still remains to be one of the most segregated cities uh, uh, in the country, really. And so uh, having said all of that, I, I just want to want to give you, um, you know, the, the benefit of the doubt here that you will look at these issues, but it's not, it's not pleasant. It's not pleasant out there. And the culture is not good. It is of total non-inclusion. And so I'm just laying that out there to you. So you'll know where I'm coming from and I'll know where you're coming from. Okay. I, absolutely. I greatly appreciate that because I'd rather be direct and honest about these things than pretend things don't exist. And I would, if confirmed, be very interested in hearing from you if there's specific things that you want me to know and think that I could be in a position to act upon. Well, we'll see. Thank you so much for your, your willingness to serve. Thank you. Madam Chair. Yes, Councilman Harder. Yes. Um, Honorable uh, Ms. Arnold, uh, just want a couple of comments. As you know, you're being a, appointed to a fire standards board. And uh, with the way the municipalities are set up in St. Louis County, uh, you know, we have about 20 or 25 different fire departments right. co covering the whole county. And then you look at the city of St. Louis. Uh, what can you bring to the table to help these 20 plus fire departments work together better because that is a fire standard and to make sure that that policies and procedures are being followed across the board instead of having 20 or 30 policies and procedures being followed out there in the county? Well, so I, you know, it's very clear that I'm not a firefighter. The Reverend Rooks has quite a bit of experience on me there. But what I am interested, or excuse me, have experience doing is working with organizations that have lots of different constituencies and have to figure out a way to move forward together. And for the Fire Standards Commission, this is even more important because this is about the safety of our residents. So really, I think it's taking different people's interests and ideas and helping come to a conclusion about which one should govern so that yes the most important thing is the safety of the people within our community okay thank you and also i want to challenge you also when you get a chance to go ride on a truck for a day absolutely you know i was i have not yet been out with our webster grows police department or fire department because i was scheduling those as COVID hit so as soon as i am able to do that i would very much like to do that thank you for the suggestion yeah i Thank you. Madam Chair, may I ask another question right here very quickly? Yes, go ahead, Councilwoman. Thank you, um, um, Honorable Arnold. How did you come to apply for this position? So I, it was actually suggested to me, uh, we, the union has already come up in this discussion. Kurt Becker is a constituent of mine and suggested that I might be interested in this in part because we have just been through the process also of negotiating a union contract with our firefighters and the firehouse. We've been talking a lot about fire issues in our community within the last couple of years. And so I believe that's why I came to mind. He suggested it and I looked at it and it is a part of our um, city that I, although I feel like because of this discussion, know some, it's something that I think is just crucial to our safety. So I, I said I'd apply. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Madam Chair, one, one yes, quick Councilman question, sure. just for clarification. 
Uh, Ms. Arnold, is the fire department in Webster Groves under the uh, management of the city itself and the Board of Aldermen, or are they a separate fire district with its own board? No, we are a municipal department that is uh, directly re reports to the city manager and then through the city manager to us as the city council. So by you being on that board of aldermen have set policy and procedures for that fire, de uh, uh, fire department over the years? Is well, that, that, is, that is correct. I am in my, uh, just beginning my third year on the council. So I haven't done much fire policy, but yes, we have. We do. But, that, but that's that's the normal oversight that correct. your council has. Yes, that is correct. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? All right, thank you, Ms. Arnold. We appreciate your willingness to serve in this important role. Um, now we will hear from Ms. Raven Akram, who has been appointed or nominated to fill a vacant position for a term of four years to the St. Louis County Civil Service Commission. Uh, Ms. Akram, please introduce yourself. Sure. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Raven Akram, and I'm an attorney here in St. Louis. Right now, I am in-house litigation counsel for Macy's. Uh, so my team handles all of the litigation for Macy's and its affiliates, including Bloomingdale's and Blue Mercury. Um, so we handle all of the uninsured litigation. So if you go into Macy's and slip and fall, that doesn't come to my team, um, but everything else does. Uh, about 80% of my work uh, is employment law. Um, so anything we get sued for from discrimination cases, wage and hour cases, my team handles all of those as well. Uh, before I was at Macy's, I was in private practice at Sandburg, Phoenix, and Von Gontard, um, mostly handling civil, uh, just general civil litigation defense. Uh, but again, with a special focus on employment law, uh, we represented municipalities, including Madison County, Illinois Sheriff's Department, uh, and the city of O'Fallon. So when I was a summer associate in law school, I actually shadowed a hearing for the St. Louis uh, County Civil Service Commission. Um, so I got to see a little bit about how it worked. Uh, and then continue to represent the city of O'Fallon throughout my practice. Um, currently at Macy's, I am also chairing the uh, Diversity and Inclusion Council, so I was interested in a lot of the comments I heard here today. Um, I will say that working at Macy's, though, I have not had any cases in Missouri, because knock on wood, we actually just don't get sued a lot here. So I uh, have felt very disconnected from Missouri and the St. Louis community. So this was a great opportunity for me to get involved and reconnected with my community. So I'm looking forward to serving. If anyone has any questions for me, I'm happy to answer. Questions from the council. All right, I am seeing yes, I, I, oh, I, Councilman I, Days. Absolutely, uh, Miss, um, is it Akram? Akram, yes, that's right. Akram, how did you come to apply for this position? I learned about it from Cora Faith Walker, former representative who works for Sam Page. And do you understand what the what this this does, this Civil Service Commission does? Yes, I do. I understand. We actually had our first meeting last Tuesday, so I was thrown into it immediately. Oh, you're already serving? Uh, yes, I sat in on a hearing last Tuesday. As a member or just listening? As a member. So how, well, okay, that's not necessarily yours. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Any other, any other questions? All right, I am seeing none. Thank you, Ms. Akram, for your willingness to serve. Um, we Hi, have Karen. no, did I, I hear Oh, yes, Councilman Tarkas. Thank you. I'd like to inquire of the County Counselor on what auspices um, the witness was allowed to participate as a member of the Civil Service Commission without being um, uh, confirmed by the council. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it. I just want to know the, the rationale and the legal basis, please. Uh, Mr. Trakis, I was not aware of that. So um, I am will certainly be happy to look into that and um, to get back to you on with a with an answer to that question. Are you aware of any prior situations where an appointee um, oh boy. assumed a, an active role in a civil service commission appointment? I 
I am not personally aware of that, no. Whether or not it's happened, I couldn't say. Thank you. I'm Thanks, not, Madam Chair. I'm not sure if this is helpful or not, but um, Sam Page, I know, signed a letter um, approving me to act, I believe, in the interim uh, before being confirmed. I don't know if that would be helpful for you to see that. Won't help me. Thank you. Doesn't answer my question, but um, no. I'll, I'll wait to hear from the county counselor's office. Thank you, Madam Chair. There are uh, no questions um, or no public comments that have been submitted. Um, any further discussion from the council? I think it's important, Madam Chair, that we uh, get the answer to that question. Um, if there is no point for us uh, to do this, if the executives can do and put people on, uh, I don't know if this is the appropriate time to discuss that. Um, but I'm I'm a little taken aback that we have people serving and we have not done our due diligence on that. We have had problems with that before, and uh, and so I'm a little um, disturbed to hear that. So, is your comment, Councilwoman Days, um, is it about Ms. Akram saying that she is she is serving in an interim capacity before any kind of confirmation? Right. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yes. Um, I mean, I agree with you that we need to understand what the rationale and and I was not aware that there was a protocol in place for that. Yes, Councilman Tragus. And please, this is not a reflection on Ms. Ackerman in any any way. But I do concur right, with, right. with Councilwoman Days. But it would be nice to have an answer to that question. So um, to that end, I would I would say that we um, hold off on making a recommendation about this particular appointment until we get uh, until we hear from our county counselor's office about that. But um, I would entertain a motion to um, recommend Mr. Rooks to the fire standards commission and then to recommend Ms. Arnold to the fire standards commission and make a recommendation second. for the full council for voting tonight. No, I'll second I'll moved. Um, I heard a second from or a motion from Councilman Harder and a second from Councilman Fitch. I'm all in favor. Aye. 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 Opposed. Okay, we will move forward with the recommendations for Ms. Arnold and for Mr. Rooks to Fire Standards Commission, and then we will um, table the appointment of Ms. Ackram until pending further information from our county counselor's office. And again, Ms. Ackram, this does not reflect on anything about you. Uh, this is about some other some other issues that we are sifting through um, related to this. So sorry if we caught you off guard with that. <laughs> Fair enough. I understand. Well, I, have, I have a question. If we don't have an oh. issue with her, I don't see a reason why we need to hold up her appointment. We just have an issue with the process. By me, Madam Chair? Yes, Councilman Trakis. I believe that the um, Civil Service Commission appointments have to take an oath administered by the county administrator. I don't believe that's happened in this case. So th there's a bigger problem than just um, uh, the failure of the council to, have to exercise its due diligence. So I, I do think we're entitled to answer the question. Oh, no, I just what I say. If, if everyone who continually says to her, we don't have a problem with you. Personally, why wouldn't we have confirmed her? Well, I will say that in 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 uh, in my I can only speak for myself. There, this is a legislative process, and when you usurp the legislative process in one area, you do it in another area, and I'm not comfortable with that. We have a role to play. Our role is for conservation, and we need the opportunity to do what we do, absent the pressure from the county executive. I agree. I, I concur. And Madam Chair. That doesn't answer my question, do you? Yes, Ms. Oh. Still... Were you calling on me? Yes. Uh, yes, Ms. Frank. Right. Um, I think that the county council should be able to provide an answer to your question tonight at the council meeting. And of course, your committee can only make a recommendation right. um, to take up at the regular council meeting. Um, so if you make such a recommendation that at this committee meeting, that would not be you know, to approve the appointment that would not be binding on the council. 
Okay, Problem. understood. Thank you. Okay, go ahead. Madam Chair. Yes, Councilman Trigas. Thank you. Um, I would ask that the county councilor's answer include um, an answer with respect to the necessity of an oath being administered by the uh, county administrator prior to um, assuming the, the position on the Civil Service Commission. That's all. Thank you. And I, Madam Chair, Carter, yes. Yeah, and I would agree and concur with uh, with uh, uh, the others. And it, you know, this is a process, and this process is about checks and balances with the executive. And one of the jobs of of the legislature is to appoint these uh, different members of these commissions. And if we're going to give that up, like we've given up oversight and other things, what's next? Uh, I would be more interested to find out why the county executive chose to put somebody in a position without running them by us first. Why that happened. They, he knows better. The legal side of this business knows better. Why is that such an urgent matter to do that? Let's stay with the charter and the and the and the process that's already in place. That's where I have the problem. I have no problem with the candidate. I've got a problem with the process running roughshod over us. That's my comment. And Madam Chair, I would and yes, obviously, Councilman. yeah, obviously, if she is serving, then she has received some kind of a communication from somebody. Maybe we need to look at that as well. But I do agree with Councilman Harder that um, th this is our position and this is our responsibility and per the charter, I don't think we should relinquish that. I made that mistake once, I won't do it again. Amen. So Councilman Grady, go back to your question. I think, I, I don't know that there's any reason to, um, you know, to, I don't know that there's a good reason to, to, to not wait until, um, we receive the full information here and I agree that there's probably several, these are kind of separate issues, but I think that there's an interconnection as well. And so I think it as part of our due diligence and our oversight of this matter, um, I would be interested to see um, our response back from the county counselor's office before we move forward on this. Agree. And Madam Chair. Yes. Uh, I just want to make clear that I was not saying that this is um, out of compliance with the charter. I just was my point was that I was not aware of the situation and so I was not prepared to answer the question, but I'm not saying that this is a violation of the charter. Got it. Understood. Thank you for that clarification. All right. Um, with that, I would entertain a motion to, are you, I'm sorry, is someone speaking? Yeah, I think everything we said is true and we do need to do our due diligence and we do need to not relinquish or authority, which we would not be, I don't even know why that came up because we're not relinquishing our authority if we confirm someone. I'm just saying, why keep saying that we don't have a problem with her, but we won't confirm her unless we find out why she was already uh, placed on the board as an interim uh, person. And I don't know Miss Raven, I, I think her last name is, I don't even know her last name. So I don't, I'm not advocating for her, but I don't think and if we want to hold off, that's fine too. It doesn't. We say it. We say we don't have a problem yet. We won't confirm her. That doesn't make sense to me. That's all I'm saying. I think what we're saying we have a problem with the process. Exactly. That's where we have the problem. Which was and I, I do think I, I think that there. You know, if there are procedural concerns that could end up um, kind of clouding our our own. You know our ability or not our ability, but our judgment in confirming if there are procedural concerns here. So I think that that's why I I am comfortable waiting until we hear from the um, county counselor's office, the further information. And Madam Chair, Ms. Yes. might be uh, might just kind of be caught up in the in the situation here, which is unfortunate because it is to no fault of her own. Uh, she was I guess, operating right. in good faith. But again, she may just be caught up as one of the casualties of this. But I think it is clear that we have a due diligence and we need to do our due diligence. Now, what if we get information this evening? Are we still not going to confirm her? 
Um, you know, another meeting or what are we going to do? Well, we have we have some time to to discuss that for everyone to see the information from the county counselor's office and then um, to figure out if if there are the votes to move forward on it. I'm not I'm not closed off to confirming this evening, but I want everyone to um, or to vote on it this evening at least. But I want everyone to have the opportunity to review from the county counselor's office the information that we have requested. That's my question. Are we going to try to possibly confirm our this tonight or what day will we going to wait till up next Tuesday? It's whatever. I'm just asking. Yeah, I, I, we need to see if we have the votes to move forward tonight and that is not clear to me at this time. So, if not tonight, possibly next week. I'm saying if we get uh, information from the counselor's office. Are we going to attempt to you're going to check tonight? My question is, regardless of whether you get the information tonight or not, do you want to wait till Tuesday? Next Tuesday, that's all I'm asking. I think it depends on whether or not we have votes on the council to move forward tonight. I don't I don't know that I have a strong opinion on that. OK, that's all I wanted to know, because the only way you would know if you have the votes because we're not there. You would have to call everybody. And I don't think you're going to do want to do that. You only have what about thirty. Yeah, minutes. I don't. I don't know a need to reconvene this meeting if that's what you're. If that's what you are um, to reconvene this committee for um, further discussion on this matter. Uh, I, I see Ms. Frank's hand. That is correct, Madam Chair. You, the council could take up this matter for a vote without a recommendation from this right. committee. Right. I, I, I'm not, I had a hard time following your question, Councilwoman Gray. Does that answer it? I, what I'm saying is you have about 30 minutes before a little more than that, of course. So I doubt if you will be able to find out from all of us, from seven people, if we're going to confirm her or not. So you, I guess we're going to wait till next Tuesday. It's possible, yeah. And okay. I also had a request about the communication that was received. What communication did she receive to say that she's permissible to, to go ahead and serve? I think I think that's critical. It is. Madam Chair, it, 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 even if it happens, what is the downside to waiting a week? And, and I agree with you, Councilman Trakis. I don't see a downside to waiting a week. Um, this was, I believe, first first brought down to us just a week ago. And, you know, on the um, related the other folks that we just spoke with about fire standards commission, for example, have been waiting over a month. I don't, I know it's a different commission, but I don't see a downside to waiting a week. I don't, I don't know that there's an urgency here, especially if there is a mechanism that allows for her to serve in an interim capacity. So I, that, and that's what we'll find out more from our county counselor about. I, I agree with you. I don't see a downside to waiting a week. I don't know that, I don't know that there's actually an interim position on any of our committees. I've never heard of that before. Well, you're either on it or you're not. Yeah, I, I believe that there is a there is a section of the charter that allows someone to serve in an acting position until either confirmed or denied. I don't know that that extends to board and commission appointments necessarily. Um, I know that that's that is what is true. For example, when we have acting directors of departments, um, so right. perhaps it is something that is also true of boards and commissions, but has just rarely been been utilized. I don't know. We will find that out. Um, to Councilman Gray's point, we are um, we are about 45 minutes outside of our meeting. So I would like to um, adjourn this meeting so that we can each take care of any personal matters we have prior to our meeting. It's been a long day. So with that, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second, all in like favor? Have, I see the oh. African American woman, and I just want to make sure we this be a, an opportunity for an African American woman to be particip a participant. So that's my biggest thing. I don't know. Like I said, I don't know her. I'm not advocating because I know her. No, Madam no. Chair. Yes. Madam Chair, Diane. I don't know who made that motion to adjourn. <laughs> <laughs> I I don't know either. Who made that I, motion? I seconded it. Okay. Guy made it. Okay. So we have uh, Councilman Harder and Fitch making the second. Thank you. Yes. Um, all in favor. Aye. 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 Any opposed? 
Motion carries. This meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Thank you.